College basketball fans were dealt a dose of good news this week when the NCAA Division I Council approved moving the start date for men's and women's basketball to November 25th. Originally, that date was set for November 10th, but by the 25th, most schools will be finished with fall semesters and campuses will be less populated once college basketball's new date begins. So how do Montana coaches Mike Petrino and Travis DeCure, as well as athletic director Kent Haslam, feel about the changes? The early consensus is it's nice to have a starting date to work around, but there is still plenty of work and clarity necessary. The biggest thing is we're trying our hardest to have a season. Um, you know, grateful to get a date that we can look forward to. Um, still quite a few unanswered questions, and hopefully we can get some of those taken care of here in the next month or so. I think it's uh, really important that uh, there was a date set up. Uh, there's so many questions. Uh, like everybody else in the world, we're living with more questions than answers. Uh, at least with a date now, we can move forward. Yeah, and I, but I continue to think there's still a lot of work to be done. I mean, we, need, we still need to be able to navigate through the virus. We still need to get to the spot where testing and all the protocols, uh, how we're gonna deal with fans, what our schedule is gonna be. I mean, we know our conference schedule, but it really is just the starting point with a lot of work even to get to that starting point. Other changes in the ruling include teams just need a minimum of 13 Division I games to be eligible for the NCAA tournament, and preseason practices also begin October 14th. But there are still a lot of questions to be answered, with all three saying testing, having testing protocols in place, and schedule building along with traveling among the largest logistics to be ironed out. Petrino said the Lady Grizz had four games scheduled before that November 25th date, and DeCure said the entire non-conference schedule will be affected because of how teams will have to reevaluate who they're playing. It's hard because everybody's guessing, right? And when you can't get anything done until a decision is made, it, it's just wait, 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 wait. So now we're past that point and we can start working. We have a map and we have a map for like how many hours we've been practicing up to this point. Next week it can increase a little bit more. And then come October 14th, we can uh, go into a full game mode, a full practice mode with uh, our 30 practices. Really the approach now needs to be controlling what we control, get those protocols in place, and then build a schedule that is doable and then hit get into the conference schedule after the first of the year. I'd like to see an exempt season. I'd like to see, you know, my sophomores that had their season in early last year and, you know, they've been cooped up in apartments since June and off campus since March. I'd like to see them have a college experience. And if two of the four years they're going to be in school are affected negatively, It'd be nice to see them get one of those years back. And then just anything that, you know, in terms of keeping these guys safe is important. And the way we travel is going to be, you know, a big part of that. And, and so we're going to probably need a little more time to figure out our non-conference and what games we play. Um, but the biggest thing is just that's going to come down to expenses. Coaches around the country have been open to the idea of a bubble situation similar to the NBA and NHL. If some kind of bubble situation could arise, whether it be mini bubbles and games being played in between semesters or the MTE tournaments providing bubble-like opportunities. But all agree a bubble at the college level would be tough to pull off, especially one similar to pro sports. For me, the bubble works for pro athletes because they're not students. But we're dealing with college students and I just don't think that a true bubble like the NBA has set would, is work, workable or feasible. We'll create a little bit of a bubble on our own because the season won't start until school is out. So school is out before Thanksgiving, then we'll start our season. So students will leave, we'll be able to contain them a bit more. But I just don't see how a true bubble works with college students. I, I hear the reasons for the bubble, but I think logistics wise, and cost-wise, you know, it could be a, a challenge. If it's possible, but the, the expenses are high and, and it's going to be difficult to get everybody in that scenario. I thought it would have made more sense for us as a conference to look at it if there was no non-conference and try to get games in December while everyone's off campus or whatnot. But now that we feel that there's going to be a non-conference, the bubble won't be necessarily an option for everyone because there's cost that comes with it. And so for some people, it would be a good idea and others, it would come down to individual games. Um, if we stay at 16 games, we're trying to schedule nine. We're going to need a few guarantee games and we're going to need a few home games. And so if we try to bubble up, we just minimize our opportunities to do either one of those. In Missoula, Kyle Hansen, MTN Sports.